Hey guys, uh, Shane Walton here. I'm the general manager um, and instructor at the University of Ultrasonics in Houston. And I just wanted to take a quick second to introduce myself and uh, put together a little video. And um, as for the content, I decided to do a, uh, also an introduction to the new Olympus OmniScan X364, if you can see it there, um, that was released about a week or so ago. So I've had mine for several weeks now, and I've been uh, putting it through its paces, uh, using it here at the school in both my phase array and TFM courses. And I really like it a lot. It's, it's, it's moving really fast. I've got uh, more capabilities. Um, I can just do a lot more with it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do a quick little run through of it and uh, put together a, a fast TFM setup and uh, maybe scan a crack or two with it. So uh, anyway, be on the lookout for uh, more content from me regarding my work here at the school in, in both training and, and uh, UT testing in general. I plan on getting more stuff out there pretty soon. Um, also, I'll be available for, you know, kind of tech support type stuff too. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly how that's going to look yet, but uh, we'll be able to do some things like that remotely. And uh, also, I've got a few big announcements uh, regarding the school that are coming up pretty soon. Uh, I can't quite let the cat out of the bag yet, but uh, some things I'm excited about. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, there's going to be more. And um, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Um, I just fired up my OmniScan and uh, you can see the new X364 logo there on the screen. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to load it up into uh, software version 5.8. That's the latest. That's the uh, release software for the 64. And it's just the, the software across all the platforms right now. Um, I have heard that 5.9 is right around the corner. And uh, I've been told also to expect some new uh, advancements on the TFM side within the OmniScan. So uh, every software update uh, over you know the past six months or so has given us a bunch of new features across all the different uh, methods. And I'm excited to see what we get uh, new out of the TFM side of it. So TFM already works really great on the OmniScan, um, and, you know, but I'll take new features and new goodies uh, any chance I, I can get them. So anyway, uh, while it's firing up, uh, I'm going to be using the uh, 5L64A2 transducer with an N55 shear wave wedge. And I'm also just gonna be looking at a couple of these uh, one inch thick carbon steel crack samples. Uh, we call them uh, snicker bars. Um, these are the ones that I use in my training classes. So I've just got a couple of them here. Don't actually know what I'm gonna get. Uh, they could be no cracks or it could be through wall. Uh, we'll find out pretty soon. So now that the Omni's fired up, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to that feed. And uh, I'm just gonna show you real quick uh, what all might be involved in um, making a setup file. So uh, first off, I'm going to start with a new setup. Um, like I said, I just turned this thing on raw. I didn't know what to expect, um, but it pulled up my previous setup from my phased array class today. And uh, now that it's plugged in, I'm just going to hop into the main menu and uh, build a quick setup. So uh, I'm going to be using uh, carbon steel one inch. So that's the default velocity and default material. So I need to pick my probe. I'm going to be looking for my A2 5L64. And uh, my wedge, I can either use the factory wedge, but what I actually did here recently, uh, I just calibrated a, um, a wedge that I've been using in the class. It's got a little bit of wear, so I did an acoustic wedge verification and uh, much tighter than, than what the factory settings would give me. And I'm going to go to tab three uh, groups and instead of a phase array focal law, we're going to do TFM. And um, I'm going to be using TT. So TT is basically like a uh, first leg shear wave. That's typical of something that you would use a shear wave wedge for. And uh, it basically means from the probe uh, at a transverse velocity to the datum and then a transverse velocity back. So it's basically a, uh, a first leg shear wave. Um, the aim simulation here will give me a pretty good idea of what the sweet spot is of uh, the, the sensitivity um, of the current probe and wedge. 
And so when you adjust your region of interest and your frame, AIM gives you a really good reference of where your sound is going to be the best. So um, the red area is going to be the most intense region of the sound field that's calculated. Um, red to orange is about a 3 dB drop. Orange to the yellow is about a 6 dB drop. So it gives you a really good idea of, of where you're going to be good as far as your uh, sensitivity and your expected uh, reflectivity. So uh, what I have to do is basically just kind of set my, uh, my region of interest or my TFM frame or my TFM zone. There's a bunch of different terms that all, that all mean the same thing, but I'm just kind of setting my frame to optimize this red and orange area here. And uh, I'm going to go live. And uh, as soon as it goes live, I'm going to hop into my TFM settings. That would be a lot like your UT settings if you're doing uh, conventional phased array. So uh, I'm going to pull up an A scan and an N view. I'm going to go into TFM settings and uh, I'm running through these really quick because I'm trying to make a quick video. Uh, the envelope, I turned it off, which I usually do when I'm crack sizing. Um, uh, there's a misconception in the industry that the envelope is a video filter. Uh, it's actually not. It, it has a similar type look to it, but an envelope is uh, lossless. Um, it's created with a uh, 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 calculation called a Hilbert transform, and it's a lot more complex than a video filter. You're not going to lose a tip when you do it. Um, I'm also going to, but again, that's a conversation for another day. I could spend a lot of time on that. I teach it in depth in my uh, 80 hour TFM class. By the way, here at the school, I've been doing a 80 hour total focusing method class for over two years now. So we're about to do our 12th or 13th uh, class and we've been doing it for a while. Uh, prior to that, I've been working with TFM since about 2016 or 17, started building the class in 2018. Uh, really got serious in 2019 and rolled it out in 2020. Uh, I'm very proud of it. I had a few colleagues help me uh, developing it. And uh, like I said, man, we're putting out a really good program. We've got a great training training platform. It meets ASNT and ASME standards. Uh, if you haven't checked this out for that, uh, you should, because if you haven't, you're missing out on something really, really good. I'm, I'm very proud of it. So anyway, back to the instrument. Um, I'm making an adjustment here to my resolution, which is uh, basically the same as increasing or decreasing, changing my pixel quantity. If you're used to using a TFM instrument where uh, you adjust the pixels. So the more pixels really equates to more grid points in your TFM frame. And uh, the more grid points, the greater your grid density, uh, the higher your resolution. So Every instrument has a different way of uh, doing this, but um, this is the way that the Omni does. And basically it's your grid resolution. So it, it basically does the same thing. So now that I've got that set, um, I'm just going to quickly size a couple of these uh, crack samples. I'm trying to do this fast. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to make a couple little screen adjustments. I haven't set up anything. I haven't calibrated anything. I'm just kind of scanning live and raw just to give you an idea of how quick you can go through this. So I'm looking at a ID connected crack on this one inch thick specimen. You can see the tip diffraction there. And, and again, TT mode is basically like a first leg shear wave. The things that you could expect to see with a first leg shear wave, you're going to see with this. Um, but instead of me being focused at just one depth or one sound path, I'm optimally focused over a larger range. So anyway, I'm going to get a good picture of the crack on the screen. I'm going to use this index cursor to kind of roll over it. And, and what I'm doing, you know, everything can come down to an A scan, just like conventional UT. I'm looking for the spot where that tip signal, that deepest tip that I've identified of the crack, looking for the spot where it peaks. And once I find that, I'm going to set a couple of cursors. So uh, I'll put the reference cursor at uh, one inch thick, and I'm just going to slide this green measurement cursor right there into the deepest tip. And then boom, DM minus R tells me that that crack through wall height is uh, about 17 or 18 percent through wall. So uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty quick and easy, right? Um, a lot of times these cracks can be oriented one direction or another. And what I mean by that simply is they could be laid over this way or that way, you know. So you typically have to get your probe and approach the crack 
for multiple directions in order to catch the deepest tip sometimes. And, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to approach this crack from the other side and look, if you can tell it's pretty faint, but there is a very faint deeper tip signal there above what I called the first one. So yeah, I can't, I cranked the gain way up. So I cranked up everything and including some of the noise and some of the artifacts. And like I said, I'm not trying to go through real fast and get the best TFM that I could possibly do. I'm just wanting to do a quick video. So uh, I can probably bring my gain down just a little bit. And now that I found that deeper tip, I uh, might pause it, zoom into the area of interest and see if I would really want to call that a deeper tip. And, you know, I feel pretty good. It's a very faint one, but it, it is up there. And as I raster over it, you know, we're kind of splitting hairs here, but what I'm doing, I'm seeing right there as possibly a deeper tip. And by doing that, I've, um, I'm now measuring that crack, crack height at being, um, uh, uh 190 thousandths instead of 175 thousandths. So again, minor difference, but hey, that might be enough if you're doing a critical crack sizing. So flaws are oriented sometimes and uh, getting the probe in the right spot might help you see the tip a little bit better. So I'm going to go back live and unzoom. And now I'm going to hop over to just one more block. And uh, oh, it looks like we've got a really deep one here. So I'm going to turn my gain uh, down a little bit. And what I'm doing, I'm just kind of isolating this uh, tip signal. And um, the sweet spot of my beam, actually, AIM does a really great job of telling me where that's going to be. So this is going to make my video run over a little bit. But, but AIM is going to tell you, a deep crack, the sweet spot's going to be, you know, right around here. I maybe could have opened up my frame just a little bit, but I'll get a pretty good one here towards the edge of the frame. That's the sweet spot right there in the red of something that's pretty deep through wall. So what I'll do is just kind of slide my probe over to that spot and I'm going to look at this crack. So um, this index cursor, I'm going to place it right there on the middle of the indication and I'm going to zoom it over the deepest crack tip that I see. I've got to turn my gain down a little bit. So again, I'm not calibrated. I just wanted to go up and running with a live scan uh, as quick as possible. So uh, right around here, you know, I think this is probably what I would call the deepest tip. So if I pause my instrument and I'm going to move this uh, green cursor up here so I can actually take a measurement and, uh, right in there, I'm going to place it in the tip. This one, I'm getting a through wall height of about, uh, you know, about 77% through wall, uh, 0.771. That, that's pretty deep, right? Pretty deep. So just to be sure, I'm going to approach it from the other side and see if I can find anything deeper. And look at that. Just by moving the probe position, I've actually uncovered a deeper crack tip and I'm kind of twisting my, pu my probe <laughs> and skewing it to get the, uh, the best view of it. And right around there, I'm going to say is the deepest tip. Got a raster or, or slide my uh, index cursor right there. And I'm going to slide my measurement cursor in the deepest tip. And I didn't change it by much, right? I went from a 77% through wall to a 78% through wall. But hey, uh, you know, the crack is a little bit deeper than my initial estimate. So um, that's all I'm really going to do on this video. It's going to run a little bit longer than I wanted to. But again, I just wanted to introduce you to me. Do a quick little setup on the Omni scan, show it off a little bit. Um, I plan on putting a lot more of these content videos out pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to use this for a lot more things, uh, and I'm going to kind of show you what I'm doing in my classes and new techniques. Uh, maybe do like unboxing when we get new software revisions, whatever. Um, uh, if any manufacturer wants to uh, give me an instrument for a little while and let me put together a video on a demo, I'll do that for just about anything. You know, instruments, probes, scanners, just whatever. Um, I plan on doing a lot more of these, so. Um, at the end of the day, uh, my role here as the, the instructor at the U of UT, uh, my main job, my main goal, uh, my, my passion is to help you level up your UT game and level up your UT skills. It's what I do every day. I, I try to level mine up and uh, uh, my career is to help you level yours up too. So 
I get excited when I learn something. I like to share it with people. I'm not one of those that likes to hold it close to my chest and not tell people. Um, I, I'm a teacher and I'm a learner. So uh, again, I want to help you level up your UT skills. That's going to be my goal with the content that I put out there. I hope you like the video. If you do, uh, uh, follow us and look out for more stuff. Subscribe to my YouTube page. There'll be a link somewhere in the video when I get finished uh, processing this thing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take care and I'll see you real soon.